Good morning. Our, this, today, our prayers are joy and concern. And we ask you to please keep Peter Rumer, Ruth Grant, and Susan Segal, Roger White, Helen Carmichael, and Olive Poff in your prayers. This week, we pray for the Carleton Memorial Pastoral Charge, Ottawa, and the Wesley Community Church. In the life and work of the church, the UCW meeting is on Tuesday, June the 4th at 1 p.m. in Wesley's Parlor. Please join us for dessert as we celebrate fun, faith, and friendship before taking a break for the summer months. All women are welcome. The gospel concert with Lakeside Community Chorus is Sunday, June the 9th at 7 p.m. at St. Andrew's Presbyterian Church, Cobden. Highway 17 beside the park. The free will donations will go to the playground at Cobden and District Public School. The ladies' luncheon on June the 12th is our prior with former members of Wesley who have moved away. Florence Wilson and Elizabeth Gilmer have confirmed their attendance. In order for this to happen, we need to know who can drive, who needs a drive, etc. Please see Lynn Collins for information and RSVP by June the 9th. The Wesley Ladies' Breakfast is Saturday, June the 15th at 8.30 at a.m. at Finnegan's. The Steward Committee meeting is on Monday, June the 17th, 7 p.m. in the parlor. And thank you for all the donations and contributions to the church. Welcome to everybody. Um, Pastor is away. He's been away this week on a retreat and will be back in the office on Tuesday. So myself, along with Jay McLaren and a few members of the congregation, will be helping with the service today. So we will be celebrating Camping Sunday. Camping is one of the biggest youth ministries in the United Church. Camps do everything from building campers, confidence, to growing leaders in our church. Each summer at United Church camps, over 20,000 children across Canada come together to create relationship and community, relationship with one another, relationship with creation and with God. We recognize this call to Sabbath as a call to make the time and create the space to reconnect with our souls and the spirit that nourishes us. We invite you to participate in this Camping Sunday service as a time to renew our call to Sabbath, the call to silence, the chaos of our lives, and re-enter God's creation. Today we celebrate the work of God done through our United Church camps. Our acknowledgement of the land, we'd like to begin by acknowledging that the land on which we gather is the traditional and unceded territory of the Algonquin Nation. We gather as a community around the flame of God's love. Be that campfire or Christ candle, God's love burns brightly in each one of our hearts. Please join me with our opening hymn, Let Us Build a House, Voices United, 1, verses 1, 2, 4, and 5. <laughs>
morning, everybody. Please join me in our call to worship. Raise your voice and join with me. Encourage your friend, join with us. Share your stories, understand in new ways the gifts of God to us all. The sea, the sky, the land, all sing to God's glory and testify to God's strength. We shall join in, we shall praise God together. You may be seated. I like to do something a little different. I like to do a moment of centering. So I'm just gonna ask Sandra to play some quiet, beautiful, oh, beautiful Gaia music and, uh, and we're just gonna have a moment of centering. This morning, we come together as a community of faith called Wesley United Church. As we prepare for worship, I invite all of you to close your eyes for a minute. Let us let go of all the challenges we may be facing in our life today. Set aside fears, anxiety, worries, and become still. Become still and listen for God's voice. Let us open our hearts and minds to the present of God throughout all of this creation. Let us open our hearts to the truth that God reveals God's self in every situation, no matter how easy or difficult things may be. When we are still, when our minds are quiet, we can see the wonder of God's majesty in a star-filled night sky. We can hear God's whisper in a breeze blowing through the pine trees of the forest. We can feel the touch of God in a warmth of the sun on our skin on a cold, windy day. We can feel the love of God in the warm embrace of a friend. As we come together today, let us open our hearts and minds to the present of God around, among, and within us all. Let us open our hearts and minds to the understanding that we have been named beloved by our Creator. Let us open our hearts and minds to the flow of God's love within us that we experience the love of God in relationship with each other and with creation itself. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Thank you. Our prayers of adoration and confession. Holy God, we love your creation, yet sometimes refuse to care enough for it. We love our neighbors as you have taught us, yet sometimes we hurt them or refuse to allow our differences to transform us. Your love for us surrounds us in every way, yet sometimes we fail to acknowledge it. Out of your timeless greatness, dear God, Please keep loving and forgiving us. Guide us to do, say, and think according to your will. Guide us to live in respectful relationship with creation. And when there are temptations or other examples to follow that lead us away from you, we ask that you set us aright yet again. Our trust in you is complete. Amen. our assurance of pardon. God is the beginning, and through God, all things have come into being. God is life, and that life brings abundant freedom and live-giving peace for all people. 
God's love shines in the most difficult times and nothing can separate us from that love. We will now listen to our choir anthem, which is Voices United 296. This is God's wondrous world. I ask the children to come forward for our youth time. Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning. This is Camping Sunday, and I know that you've both been to camp. Yes. And I think you probably are planning to go again. <laughs> That's one of the things about camp. You can't get enough of it. So one of the things that, as I recall, at camp, that is a favorite is the campfire. Did you guys have a campfire at your camp? OK. Now, at camp, we use a lot less sophisticated mechanism than this thing. But the principle is the same. So when 
you press this and click it, there's a flame. Do you know how that works? There's a thing in the um, lighter where when you press a button, it makes a spark and a gas is released and it makes some um, fire. Raymond, you could be doing this story. <laughs> That's perfect. Yes, when you click this thing, it makes a spark and that gets the fire going. And at camp, it's usually a match, but the same principle, a spark gets the fire going. And there's a song at camp that you may have sung, and we've sung it here, and it's in our hymn book. We're not going to sing it this morning, but it goes like this. It only takes a spark to get a fire going, and soon all those around warm up in its glowing. Now here's the clue. The, the clue. That's how it is with God's love. Even though we are unaware of where God's love is, it's all around. And once you get the spark of God's love, you want to share it. Isn't that right? So this morning we're going to be talking a little later about all the th exciting things that happen at camp. And the question that is the topic for the sermon today is, where is God? And I hope that everybody will be listening and you'll get the answer. But it all starts with the spark that gets the fire going. Can you remember that? Can we have a prayer? Let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, we ask you to use a spark in us. Help us to spread your love throughout the world, but particularly among our friends and at camp. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. By the way, I thought this choir sounded really good, didn't it, from where I stood? <laughs>
before our scripture. Lord, we long for your wisdom and truth. Send your Holy Spirit to guide us as we listen to the scriptures. Prepare our ears to hear your word and our hearts to receive it. Amen. Our readings this week are from Jeremiah, 17, verses 7 to 8. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, whose trust is the Lord. He is like a tree planted by water that sends out its roots by the stream and does not fear when heat comes, for its leaves remain green and it is not anxious in the year of drought, for it does not cease to bear fruit. The Psalm, is Psalm 80, Lord our Lord. How majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouths of babies and infants, you have established strength because of your foes to still the enemy and the avenger. When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place, what is man that you are mindful of him and the son of man that you care for him? Yet you have made him a little lower than the heavenly beings and crowned him with glory and honor. You have given him dominion over the works of your hand. You have put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen and also the beasts of the field, the birds of the heavens and the fish of the sea, whatever passes along the paths of the sea. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. John 15, verses 1 to 8. I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away, and every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. Already you are clean because of the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches, Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. From, for apart from me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away like a branch and withers. And the branches are gathered, thrown into the fire and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. By this is my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit and so prove to be my disciple. Thank you, Margaret. I wasn't sure whether I was reading the scripture or not, but Margaret did it, so we're all set. So good morning, everyone. Uh, you can tell by now that I'm not pastor, and uh, this is Camping Sunday, and I think probably uh, Linda and I are the ones in this congregation who have been uh, involved with camping at least as much as anyone else. So I was asked if I would do uh, a little talk about camping this morning, so I'm, I'm very happy to do that. Um, first of all, welcome anyone who's guests here this morning. I'm not sure that we have any visitors, but if you are, you're more than welcome here. And we hope that you'll join us downstairs after the service where we're having camp hot dogs for our snack. So in this area, youth camping has been going on for well over 100 years. And the slides that are running are just a collection of pictures from camp, and they're going to run through my talk with no particular connection to what I'm saying. In fact, camping goes back 120 years at the site of Camp Loran, where it was a scout camp before it became a United Church camp. 
We have two camps in this area. We have Camp Loran, which is on the Ottawa River, west of Ottawa, and we have Golden Lake Camp uh, on Golden Lake. Those are both United Church camps. And our congregation has supported both over the years. The experiences that I'm uh, going to share have mostly to do with Camp Loran because that's where I've spent most of my uh, time camping. And uh, I started that when I was a junior boy at nine, age of nine. I'm not going to tell you what year that was, but it's uh, 60 some years ago. And uh, went on to do lots of other stuff at camp. Jesus said, bring the little children unto me. And these days, not very many children get an opportunity to experience Jesus or church or any connection with Christianity. One way they can do that is to go to camp. And while camp isn't heavy duty uh, religion, it brings forth all of the qualities that Jesus taught. And youth gain that experience by being at camp. There are mostly uh, camps for seven uh, days and, and uh, six, uh, seven nights and six days at, at Camp Loran. It's residential style camping. They sleep in cabins. Some of the cabins are on the screen. When you see them, you'll recognize those are the sleep cabins. The youngest campers are six to eight years old and they go right through to be teenagers and teen camp is always, uh, or senior camp is always lots of fun. All but one camp is, is um, both boys and girls, but there is still one girls only camp. When I was doing camping, it was, uh, we had a junior boys camp and it was only boys. And I always said, that's all I wanted. I did not want to have all the issues of both genders being at camp. Uh, camps run from July 4th to August 23rd this year. There are eight of them. And uh, the website has the, all the details if you're interested, and, and it'll be on the screen through this at one point, but it's just simply www.camploran.com. So it's a very uh, simple website. As stated in the uh, policies of Camp Loran, the purpose of camp is to provide a Christian experience in an outdoor setting. Now at church, we have a Christian experience in an indoor setting. And to be honest with you, it's a lot harder to gain a sense of God's presence in this room, in my opinion, than it is in the outdoors. And that's why camping is such a great uh, experience. The experiences include canoeing, and you two know about these uh, experiences, sports, campfires, cookout, one of my favorites, and that's what we're gonna simulate downstairs with the hot dogs. In my day of cookout, we almost uh, tried to avoid it because with 50 nine to 11 year old boys all trying to cook a hot dog over one fire, it's mayhem. Ketchup, mustard, everywhere. Hot dogs in the fire. <laughs> so we used to have a very strict rule about how a campfire happened, and that was my, my fault. I was so anal about it. But sing songs are common, and of course, all the great meals where everybody gathers in the dining hall. And one of the favorites of camp at Loran is the big rock. And you'll see a picture of that on the screen as it comes along. It is a favorite meeting place. All children are welcome. There's no denominational uh, segregation or uh, uh, any uh, indication of that. Uh, those families who are unable to afford uh, may avail themselves of a subsidy that is available through the camp. And that is supported by congregations like us who make donations. One of the main projects underway right at the moment is a, a new washroom. For years and years, all there have been is two uh, buildings with wash, washroom facilities and no showers. 
And uh, if you've been around particularly boys for a whole week without a shower, you know showers are something we should have. <laughs> um, <clears throat> campfire and camp life is a place where friendships are formed. Campers become aware of themselves and of their community, those around them. Camp can be a life-changing experience. We have campers who arrive from situations where they almost have to fight for everything they get. They're used to pushing in line to get to the front. They're used to grabbing for themselves as quickly as they can because somebody else may grab it if they don't. Uh, they can be very uh, cross with others. The camping experience allows those kinds of campers to see a different way of life. There's no need to push to the front. There's lots of everything. Uh, others may uh, encourage them not to push to the front by keeping them as friends in further back in the line. Um, they learn to share and they learn to care for each other, not just for themselves. And it's very difficult anywhere else to experience that except at camp. The value statement of Camp Loran is respect, collaboration, and community. And those sum up very well the uh, kinds of things that campers experience. This congregation has supported camp in several ways over the past 50 plus years. We have sponsored a camp uh, as far back as I was directing uh, by making a donation to the camp director. Uh, Naturally, there are expenses that a person who is organizing a camp uh, has, and, and those are out of their pocket. And so sponsoring a camp, like we do, in this case, it's junior co-ed, and it's Steve McCullough, who's a cousin here and of our church, is the director. So he will get from us $450 to help him with that uh, camp work. Uh, secondly, we, we receive donations in our offering envelopes, and uh, I think I have one here somewhere this morning. Those are in your, pu in your folders. These are for, is this going to make a noise if I put it back? Yes. <laughs> uh, so these are the camping envelopes this morning, and I encourage you to uh, give some prayerful consideration to making a donation to Camp Loran. You could do it through this envelope. We have a $750 budget in our line of uh, expenses this year to donate to the camp, and it helps with all the other things that can't be afforded uh, through the camper registration fees. We also provide leadership from this congregation. Over the years, there have literally been dozens and dozens of uh, individuals who've donated their time and skills to be at camp to help with everything from counseling to uh, leadership roles and on to directing. And uh, Linda and I were involved with that for 30 some years as leaders. And uh, I can assure you that the leaders get as much back from watching what goes on at camp as the campers do. So it's a very rewarding uh, thing to do. The camp has very well appointed maintenance building, uh, actually named after Renton Patterson, who was instrumental in the maintenance and care of the camp for many years. There are two recreation halls. One is Fellows Hollow, which is, was built and uh, remains on the campsite uh, by Fellows High School students and a new recreation building uh, named after the past, the recent coordinators who have just retired. There's a permanent staff motel. You'll see that on the screen. A leader's cabin, two washrooms that I mentioned, a coordinator's cabin, and eight camper sleeping cabins. As well, there's a large playing field, an archery range. Raymond, have you ever done archery? You'd enjoy doing archery, I'm sure. 
uh, a campfire circle, an outdoor chapel. And uh, from my perspective, the outdoor chapel replaces a sanctuary like this. The stained glass windows are the sunlight coming through the trees. The roof is the arch of the trees over the, the chapel. The carpeting is the moss on the floor. The pews are not any less comfortable than these, they're log benches. And, uh, and the setting is on the Ottawa River where the sun sets during Vespers each evening. And that's a very special place. Our daughter was married there. There are other activities um, like cabin cleanup. <laughs> uh, my experience with boys is that, yeah, that happens, but it doesn't happen easily and it doesn't happen all that well. But they do spend some time making their bed, restacking their clothes, finding their wet towel and hanging it up and so on. So that's a very good experience. Teamwork is always evident in the cabin. Cooperation and camaraderie are most evident. God is there. At breakfast, at lunch, at dinner in the evening, the laughter and the noise and the sense of community is so strong. And, and the, the campers just love that, that sense of being part of a, of a group like that. There's no question God is there. Several activities uh, such as swimming, crafts, sports, life studies. Life studies is a soft term for Bible study where Jesus' teachings and the way he taught us to live are shared with youth in a way that they can connect and understand. They learn to care about each other and the environment, all based on Jesus' teachings. God is there. Uh, lunch and rest period. Rest period does not exist in junior boys camp. Boys the age of Raymond almost never sit still. You're doing very well, Raymond. But at rest period, the arms are going, the legs are over the side of the bunk, the, the head's up, the head's down, and uh, rest is not that easy to find. But it's all part of the team and they all learn to uh, respect each other's uh, different personalities and, and different needs. And of course, counselors are there, trained to support, care, and encourage. God is there. Tuck is uh, probably the favorite time of the day for everybody. And I'm not sure whether it's called that, where you went, uh, Lee and, and Raymond, but uh, Tuck is where they have a, usually a soft drink and a confection of some kind, uh, generally low in sugar, <laughs> because these guys don't need any more energy. Uh, and it is one of the times when lineups happen. And it's one of the times when those who tend to be more bullyish learn that that's not necessary, it's not appreciated, and that it's disliked. And that peer pressure and the, the kind of coaching that the counselors give teaches those individuals that they don't have to be first in line. They don't have to be grabbing. They have uh, friends who are also there and they're all sharing together. So there's laughter, friendships prevail, and God is definitely in that line. The afternoon program is probably the favorite of everybody's in that that's when it's beach time. And there there's more laughter, games on the beach, wonderful beach at Loran. It's one of the prime sand points on the entire Ottawa River with shallow and deep swimming. There's a beautiful big raft for the, uh, those who are capable swimmers and, and they all enjoy the beach especially uh, boys. <laughs> I remember a, a boy uh, diving off the raft. Now the raft sits at the edge of shallow water on this side and deep water on this side. If you're familiar with the Ottawa River, a lot of the shoreline drops off quickly. 
And this particular camper, I used to go out when I knew he was going out to the raft because I didn't trust everybody to watch him. He would jump into the deep side and disappear straight down. And I'd watch, I'd look, he wasn't coming back. And this was every time. And then all of a sudden, bum first, up he came. <laughs> I don't know how he did it, but he stayed down a lot longer than most, and it drove me nuts. It was crazy. But at the beach, and on the raft, and in the river, setting among the beautiful shores of the Ottawa River with the uh, Laurentian Mountains in the background, God is there. Sports, Vespers occupy the evening. A short worship service outdoors is what we call Vespers in the chapel that I mentioned earlier. And uh, it's a quiet time, a time for a little short scripture reading, some singing, and maybe a little theme story geared towards the age of the campers. And there's no question about it, God is there. And that is where Jennifer, our daughter, was married. And God was there, for sure. Snack, bedtime, and lights out. Oh boy. If the lights would just go out, but somebody forgot something and on they come again, or somebody else isn't there and I have to go and find them, or whatever. Uh, so bedtime is always a little challenging, but once they're asleep, they sleep because they've had such a busy, active day. The um, uh, activities throughout the day uh, usually make them tired enough to sleep. Along with the beautiful fresh air and the wonderful setting uh, in the middle of nature, uh, it is uh, very conducive to sleep. Now it's interesting today that uh, Rodina and Sandra have picked hymns that are focusing on just that, God's beautiful world. And so uh, hymns uh, reflect uh, what we're saying, uh, where is God is answered in those hymns. Today, when many kids get no experience with church or God or Jesus' teachings, Christian camping provides an opportunity to do that. With our support, we help enable all of that to happen. And we are uh, one of the major supporters of Camp Loran as a congregation. And we need to continue to do that. So for youth to find God, can't go wrong with camping. Thank you to all who support Christian camping. And thanks be to God. Amen. Thank you, Jay, for sharing your experience and for the work that you and Linda have done at Camp Loren. And I can tell you, I, I never had the opportunity to go to camp, but my son did. At age seven, he went to Camp Loren and he became a junior counselor there. He became a senior counselor there and then he moved away. And we just had this conversation last year about sending my grandson to camp when he's old enough. And uh, my son still has maintained relationships, uh, friendships with some of the kids that he met at camp. Thanks for Facebook, <laughs> that they're able to correspond and connect. So it really is an, a, an experience that um, is important that we try to um, support the kids that that go to camp and give them that opportunity and I for one know that there are many children that can't afford to go to camp and there's barriers that are in place whether it's it has to do with a monetary reason or transportation reason and it's important and I thank you know Wesley for stepping up and supporting Camp Loren and these children so um, thank you very much let's 
Let's join our choir with our message hymn, O Beautiful Gaia, More Voices 41. Prayer of dedication, loving God, accept the gifts of our time, talent, and tithes for the work of your church in this community and beyond. We share what we have so that the warmth and light of your love will spread to all those around us. Amen. You may be seated. Our prayers of thanksgiving and intercession. God of love, we can learn a lot from the cooperation and fun of camp. In life, as at camp, learning and challenges become stepping stones to our growing maturity. Thank you for surrounding all of us with love, guidance, and forgiveness. We turn away from you sometimes and doubt you or stop seeking to understand your terms as opposed to our terms. 
So today, dear God, our prayers for the people include ourselves and others like us who need reminders about your commitment to us. Help us to take on a mantle of caring for all life, no matter what our differences are, so that we can make a real difference in the world. There are so many struggling for food or peace, for safety, or for the freedom to worship. We sometimes feel so helpless. Guide us to ways in which we can help those in need. Open us to receive your teachings. Help us let our little light shine by showing love to all. Help us to accept changes in our understanding of your word that encourage deeper thinking, shifts in perspectives and understanding, which can all lead us to a stronger faith. Bless those who are struggling with physical or mental illness, those grieving losses of any kind, and those who are attempting to find honesty in relationships in social, family, or work situations. God, help those who are suffering find strength in your love and feel renewed in your faith. Humbly, we ask your blessing on these, our intercessions. Together we pray as you have taught us to pray. Our Father, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For those are the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We have been reminded today that camp is a gift to us and to the church at large. The stillness of the morning air, the sureness of the earth as our foundation, the joy of the lake, river, or ocean, and the warmth of community around the fire are all gifts that we receive at United Church camps and are just a few of the ways but by which we can enter into Sabbath. Go into the world knowing that you are called to still the chaos in your life and that God provides many resources with which you can achieve that stillness. For that is the good news. We are loved beyond all measure and are provided with all our spirits need. We are not alone. I just want to uh, thank Jay again for sharing his experiences and his message with us about United Church Camps. I also want to thank the choir today because I know you guys did listening to Oh Beautiful Gaia and it hasn't been sung for quite some time and wow, it's incredible in the choir anthem. I, I really hope and pray that you guys will at some point feel confident enough to come up here and lead some time in worship because when you are up here and you hear the choir it's incredible it's so different from down there it's beautiful so thank you very much and i also want to thank yes they need a round of applause here <laughs> and i and i also want to thank those that helped with the uh, worship service today rhonda catherine linda Margaret and uh, where is Elaine? <laughs> Elaine, and <laughs> wherever you are, Elaine, thank you very much for helping with the worship service. So let's join in with our closing hymn, I the Lord of Sea and Sky, Voices United 509.
just want to remind everybody to go downstairs for some delicious hot dogs. <laughs>